Good morning slash afternoon, afternoon everyone. Welcome to today's live. It's Bank Holiday Monday here in London. It's also a stunning day. Literally, the sun is shining. Oh, there you go. The sun shining. Um, so yes, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a nice day today. So I won't keep you too long on this live. I'm going to do about half an hour's worth of uh, lovely catching up with Richie Norton. He's our lovely guest today. Um, we're going to be chatting to Richie about his lockdown, seeing what he's been up to. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some. Um, yeah, hopefully, we're going to chat to him about his uh, his, his strength temple and, and all of his uh, other business ventures that he's involved with. Um, super excited to uh, to chat to him actually because um, yeah, I've, uh, I've I've been following him on Instagram for a while and love what he does and uh, I've actually never uh, I've never actually spoken to him about it. So yeah, I'm really excited to ask him some questions about kind of his, his philosophy and obviously with me being coaching and for the you know for life coaching and stuff and his is more sort of physical coaching. They definitely intertwine. So we'll, we'll have some good chats about that uh, today, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, anyway, if anyone's got any questions, as always, please pop them in the box. We'll try and answer them as best we can. Um, we're going to be here for about half an hour or so. So yeah, fingers crossed. Um, you enjoy the uh, enjoy the live. Appreciate everyone tuning in from wherever you are in the world. If you're anywhere other than London, give me a hey or give me a shout out. Um, should be should be good fun. Anyway, um, yes, if. Uh, Richie is um, hopefully going to join us soon, but um, yeah, for those that you don't know him, um, Richie Norton is, uh, he's got this a company called The Strength Temple, and he works with um, people to help strengthen their mind and their body, and so that they can become better humans, basically. Um, he works a lot with yoga and meditation, calisthenics, uh, hey, from North Devon, <laughs> um, so things like that, and he, he you know, he's, he's extremely extremely knowledgeable in his field he's been doing it for about 10 years um hi from scotland <laughs> and uh he has um yeah he's perfect he's perfected this and i believe he is the uh the, the sort of the master in this field uh at the moment so yeah i'm feeling really excited about chatting to him regarding all this stuff so um yeah uh it'd be interesting to see how he's been getting on during lockdown what he's been up to whether he's been uh Keeping keeping safe and, and and sane, or whether it's got to him yet, but we'll uh, we'll discuss that shortly. So, uh, yeah, here he is. I'll just bring him in. Good old chat. Yo. Richie, what's happening? How are you? Yeah, good man. Nice to see you. How you doing? Yeah, I'm um, I'm really good. I've had a surf today already, so. Um... Oh, so far off to a good start. Jealous. Is it is, is, it is lovely weather down there? Where, where are you in the world? I'm in South Wales right now. South Wales. Okay, so is the weather, is the weather lovely and gorgeous like it is here in London? Pretty dreamy. Not good. gonna lie. Not <laughs> and gonna the lie. break this morning, was it nice? Yeah, we've been very lucky that the storm swell has brought in waves and the wind brought in some really interesting sky colours. I'm very lucky with my view as well. Blue sky and sunshine, fields and animals and wildlife. So I'm pretty blessed. <laughs> Fantastic. We've been, been spoiled. Absolutely. It looks like, it sounds like it. Fantastic. So thanks so much for joining me the, the, today. Um, I, know it's, uh, I know it's a gorgeous day outside, so I won't keep you too long. But I just wanted to get, catch up with you, really, and just see what you've been up to during lockdown. I mean, it's always it's been a funny time for everyone. And I've been sort of chatting to quite a few people uh, over the last few weeks about their, mostly their lockdown learnings. Because I think there's a lot to take away in terms of a positive from this whole experience. Um, so I just want to sort of kick off and ask you, what do you think you have learned most about being in lockdown and, and during this whole pandemic? <laughs> what have you learned well there's a big list so i think it's just, it's ca kind of a case of which ones come to mind right now are probably the most visited thoughts and i think the time of reflection has been really important for me to actually stop i, I move a lot i travel a lot i give a lot to others and you don't always take stock to stop and recharge your own batteries. And I think we can all, all relate to a little bit of that. You know, we, I like to think of us all having these little, these magical powers, these, all these abilities and gifts. And we all have this opportunity to leave something while we're here and bring value to every day. And 
that's really great if you can embody that. But what ends up happening is you can give so much and be so driven and so enthusiastic and so focused that you don't top yourself up. Yeah. So take a bit of time out and reset, recharge, you know, chill, do things that you love, tap back into your passions. Because I find before you know it, you've steered maybe down a path that doesn't seem so familiar, but that's kind of where you've ended up. And that can be your surroundings, that can be your job, it can be the people around you, it could be the environment change. So for me, I, I've been able to like reflect on where I've come yeah. and where I've been. And also now prioritizing what I think are important and, and let's say what I feel are my values because yeah. that was really what allowed me to come on the path I'm on now because it wasn't always smooth running. And I really do feel, apart from the fact, obviously, the, there's a lot of, you know, um, illness and there's, you know, there's all this fear and all this um, worry and panic and confusion everywhere. I think if you choose to go down that path and if you choose to absorb all this information and you let it consume you and overwhelm you, it's never going to put you in a, in a positive space to be able to keep moving forwards and see the positives and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I've been very cautious to not overconsume. I've been putting content out there and I've been dipping my toe in the water, just trying to see what's going on, how people are managing how people are evolving, adapting, pivoting in the industry that I'm in. And I think if we're all able to just take a little step back and use this time that we have to observe what's going well, what we can change, what's within our power to change, what, you know, what can we control, what can't we control, I think we're able to put in some really great foundations now to then steer ourselves into something that is more in tune with what we're here to do during this time yeah i completely you know? agree i think it, i think it, what i hear what you're saying i think it's amazing that yeah a lot of people do always focus on the you know what's going on in front of you and sometimes that you can't control you know when we when we got put into lockdown you know that's something that's completely out of our control and everyone's in the same boat and a lot of people i think were looking at it from an anxious point of view and going like, oh my god how can i how can i navigate this but actually if you look backwards like you said you can actually hone in on all the skills and all the strengths and all the positives and all the wins that you've had in the last you know however long that then you can go well okay when i did those you know those uh courses a couple of weeks back which i haven't actually used yet they actually might be great now to introduce into my life and now i can pivot either my business my life my exercise my routine whatever it might be to make this time the best it can possibly be um i had a chat with a, a guy called chris williamson the other day and, and he, he put it quite nicely he said in 20, 30, 50 years time, when we look back on this time, what are you going to be able to say you did? What are you going to be able to say that you looked at and sort of remember from the pandemic of 2020? And it's very true. You know, a lot of people, I think, will take this time to chill and relax. But I think a lot of people also take time to reflect and look at what they can do with it, whether it be studying, reading, starting a business, starting a fitness routine, you know, getting into some sort of um, new curricular activity that they haven't done before. And then you can look at it and it will have a compound effect going forward. You know, you'll be able to then look at that and go, well, I started that in lockdown. I'm now three, four, 10, 20 years time. And I, I, I wouldn't have done that unless this happened. So that's a good positive to take from it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of people are, are looking for that positive out, uh, like outlook to, 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 go, to harness onto. Um, and from the stuff that I've seen on your social media, it's a lot of, a lot of positivity and a lot of, uh, yeah, just centering your world around what's important to you, which I think is really, really important. Um, and your, your your business, the Strength Temple, and I mean, I know you're associated with Fit as well and a couple of other um, big brands and stuff. How's things been going with with that? Have you been keeping tabs on stuff with that or is, it, is that, has that also taken a bit of a backseat? No, not at all. I think Fit's come into its own, hasn't it? You know, it's it was ahead of its time and now it's all starting to take shape with how valuable and how important some sort of home routine can be but also fun and interactive and you know provide results so you know the feedback's been incredible luckily i film in advance all the the videos so with all the content out there and all the options to do all this online training the fact that fit has sort of fitted in just perfectly to connect people as well as give you structure at home and keep you motivated and 
you know, provide community when you're lacking engagement and interaction with people to keep you, you know, driven and moving forwards. The, the feedback's been epic. So it's been a real mm -hmm. like blessing to be part of the actual mix and be in people's lives, even though it's virtually and hear all the positive feedback. So we're in the process of actually filming some more online uh, classes, new series, new plans. And nice. it's all been built off the back of the feedback that we've got over the last few weeks. So it's directly in response with how people have been struggling or managing and enjoying like the home workouts, picked all the best bits because it can be a little bit samey. I mean, I've had enough of home training, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you keep it fresh and you keep it interesting, like you said before, try something different, step out of your comfort zone, do something you've not done before, try a challenge you've never, you know, even thought about before. Now you've got the time and see how your body responds and just the challenge and the leaning into the obstacle of maybe a bit of fear and concern, lack of fitness, lack of ability, completely unknown. That's where you get the results, but also that's where the mindset, you know, really starts to become stronger and build up more resilience. So yeah, fit has been an incredible tool, I think for thousands now. So yeah, it's really great. That's awesome. That's really, really good. Actually touching on what you just said about how if you can't do something and you try something new and you kind of almost strengthen your, your, your mind and your body to do different things, it comes back to that question of, well, I can't go to the gym because it's closed. So how can I still work out, you know? And by literally changing that one small word from like can't to, to how, you suddenly put yourself in a positive mindset and you start mm -hmm. looking for the answer. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that sort of thing where if someone isn't into, if someone wants to keep fit, but they haven't got a gym or they haven't got a home gym, then they might think, well, how can I keep fit? Oh, I can do, you know, calisthenics. I can do fit. I can do uh, running. I can do, you know, anything that, that basically keeps you fit healthily and you know in your mind in your body but it's it's understanding that because you've, you've been restricted it's almost given the opportunity to to grow in a different way and i think that's again it's another positive you can take from this whole thing is that it, even though there are issues going on in the world you can look at it and go well what can i use this time for to learn something new um because with the strength temple am i right in saying you 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 bring in yoga meditation calisthenics all sorts of different sort of types of activity that are strengthening the mind and, and the body, obviously. What is, is that, is that the strength temple as a whole or, or is, is, there, is there more to it than, than, than that? Well, I guess it keeps evolving as I think, I like to think that a lot of people are constantly exploring new things. I'm no different. So my journey from rugby to <laughs> yoga wasn't just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because it doesn't <laughs> really. No. Um, the strength temple was born from me m making a huge realization that you couldn't just keep smashing your body with physical training and lifting lots of weights without body taking some wear and tear and eventually needing to be rebuilt or rejuvenated, restored in some way. So my body broke and I was lucky to be caught at the right time and be given the right tools at the right time to rebuild from scratch. So the, the strength temple is mobility, it's movement, it's calisthenics, it's body weight stuff, it's reconnecting with your own physical abilities. Yeah. Breath work, meditation, never came natural to me. And yeah. most people will put it off because they don't feel it resonates with them or they're not quite explored it in the way that, you know, I guess connects with what they're looking for or they haven't found the right teacher. So yeah. I wanted the strength temple to incorporate all of these things or at least give you a way in through my eyes, which needs to be dummy proof, but also delivered in a very simple way where you can at least grasp something that will provide some value. So simplifying training for anybody. So we're at home at the moment. We don't need many tools. People think they need a gym. People think they need a trainer. People think they need all these like fancy gimmicks, but really it's about reconnecting with what you're actually capable of physically, but also allowing the mental health to be incorporated in that and mental resilience, positive mindset, focus, creativity. It comes from you stopping and taking a little step back and reconnecting with a movement practice, a breath work practice that suits that moment, that day. Yeah. And because I'm so easily distracted, I'll get bored if I do the same thing all the time, but also my body's not gonna respond as, as well. Yeah. So you need to mix it up. You need to play. 
You need to freestyle. You need to step out your comfort zone. You need to go and just get lost in nature. The strength temple is all of these things in the best way I could possibly, you know, express yeah. it with hopefully some really simple tools that people can follow along, just like it would be for me starting from the beginning again. Yeah, I can see the passion comes straight through, man. It's really awesome to watch. Yeah. Um, a question I wanted to ask you, breath work, right? So mm -hmm. something that I, I've only recently sort of heard about, and to be honest with you, I, I associated it with meditation to, be, to, to begin with. And mm -hmm. meditation for me has always been a hard one. I, I can't sit still either. I find it really hard to concentrate. So my meditation is actually swimming. I go swimming for two hours and I just shut off and I don't think. And that for me mm -hmm. just calms me down. Mm -hmm. But breath work is, is slightly different. And would you mind just explaining it to me and for those that are watching that might not, understand sort of maybe the, the what, what what the difference in meditation and breath work is um okay so f f the way i came across meditation because i was taught about meditation years ago and i was like nah i'm a rugby player we don't really meditate we don't do yoga it's not not really for us it's not really sort of how we associate ourselves with uh you know health and well-being you know i thought it was a bit woo woo you know like mm. so it was actually a performance coach in the u.s about 10 years ago that said, I do breath work, able to meditate. And I thought, well, breath work is meditation. And he was like, well, yeah, it is a form of breath work, but there's more going on. And he used breath work practices to get the, the system, the mindset, the body ready to sit in stillness to be able to find a deeper meditation. So like you were saying, there's a, there's a form of movement meditation there's, a, there's an active meditation. It's more about bringing attention to the practice and accepting whatever comes up and working through it. There's so many different, I think, layers to meditation. Yeah. And I think this is why I went down the rabbit hole of breath work because breath work I found was the, the, the doorway to allow people to understand how their body responds by changing the way they breathe, by bringing it more consciously, by paying more attention. So you then less up here, million miles an hour, thoughts everywhere, monkey banging a drum and struggling to sit still, find that nice chilled meditation and starting to understand how their body changes from a, a stimulated response, high energy, hectic, stimulated to calm and restorative and gentle and de-stress and unwind and how just simple breathing mechanics in through the nose, out from the mouth. No one really pays it attention unless you really start to then go deeper into it and see how your body responds. So breath work I find is the toolbox that will allow you to find a deeper meditation of the state that you find works best for you. And I'm still on that journey. I haven't got it all figured out. I just yeah. know breath work is a great place to start. If yeah. you struggle to find stillness, Okay. Or you struggle to manage the busyness of the head to be able to work more inwardly. Would, so, would you say it's more practical based on like, if you sort of put them side by side and sort of, because I think a lot of people would think meditation is to sit cross-legged and just sit still for a, a yeah. lot of time and think closely your breathing. Would you say breath work is more, you're more concentrated on phys like physically breathing, so therefore it can concentrate, it's, it's easier for people to concentrate on the actual activity than it is to sort of just think about it, like meditation. Yeah, you could say that, you could say that. I mean, when you think meditation, you think, well, you, you're, you're understanding the mind, you're observing thoughts, you're, yeah. you're allowing the body to sort of find that stillness. But for me, meditation can be a body scan, which is physical. So in the morning, for example, I will do a movement practice that will be a movement meditation where I'll breathe and I'll flow and I'll, I'll let the breathing control my tempo because some days I won't feel very energized and I'll allow, allow yeah. that way to naturally find the rhythm that I want. And before bed, I'll do a breath work practice that will get me more, you know, grounded. But then the movement, uh, sorry, the physical will be meditation, will be a breath in and a breath out. Every time I breathe out, I'll try and soften part of my body. That could still be classed as a breath work practice. Okay. For me, I like to think meditation is connecting the two. Yeah. So mind and body to allow you to take more control, to allow me to find stillness and then channel that energy anywhere I want. Whereas breath work for me is either going to be an upregulation, so highly stimulated, fire myself up, switch myself on, get ready for training, or a very quick way to downregulate the system and to, to affect my physiology. So 
it also teaches you how to work with the mechanics of how you breathe. So there's no point trying to meditate if you aren't aware of how your respiratory system works. So yep. let breath work be the tools for you to learn about how you breathe and how you respond to the way you breathe. And that way you can start to really then fire up and signal and train your physiology to work more efficiently and faster and respond more effectively. And that way you can either shut down into a nice deep meditation or you could use the breathing to stabilize the spine and create more of a brace when you're training. And then I find there's a real crossover, but it's such a big space to go and explore. Yeah. I think if anyone wants to go and explore it and actually take it seriously, I'd start to practice with different trainers and explore different methods, different um, protocols, let's call it, in performance. Because that's where people really start to feel a difference and then they can channel it into a meditation. So, yeah, that's an interesting one because I'm still playing. I don't think yeah. I'll ever stop playing because we're learning so much. But I recommend going into it. Yeah, because I've seen a few bits on Instagram, you know, with yourself and, and um, uh, is, is it, um, oh, there's another guy, I can't remember his name. There's a, there's a few people sort of have seen that popping up and doing this sort of thing. That's why I was interested to ask. The one thing I wanted to ask you, though, which I think would be quite interesting for people to, that may be listening, is your, your mindset from being in rugby, which is, as you said, quite a, you know, high-powered, hit-your-body-hard kind of activity, as well as sport mindset-wise and body-wise. How did you then find the transition by learning meditation and, and breath work and, and the journey you've been on since then to get to the point now where you're, you're where you are now, but also the, what, 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 what was the sort of the switch in mindset that you found the most beneficial for you to be now in a position where you are? So to make this relatable to everybody, um, I lost my way with where I was going in life, my training, I'd stopped playing rugby, I got injured, so I felt pretty lost. I had disconnected with my training. I wasn't valuing and respecting my own health. So it deteriorated, got pretty sick, put on loads of weight, felt just rubbish. Headspace was a, a real pickle. And um, it was really lonely and I was just really confused with where to take my, my focus and just really disconnected from my body. And it was a health scare that I just basically started to just have like issues with chest pains and dizziness and I was sleeping really badly and aches and pains and things just starting to like disconnect. And it was just someone pulling me aside and saying at the right time when I was just kind of waiting for someone to kind of rescue me or just go maybe deeper into the, the negative headspace I was already in that just highlighted the simple values of why I'm here and how important health is for you to achieve anything. And if there's one thing you need to take care of, it's your health and it's your well-being, and only you can control that. No one yeah. can change you, you've got to change yourself. People can influence you and guide you and nurture that change, but you have to decide what you're here for. You have to decide that you're here for a reason. You have to decide that your health, your care, the way you look after yourself is down to you. Don't let anyone try and convince you any different than that. No one's going to do the work for you. And I was lucky someone kind of like shone this light for me. I like to think I kind of do the same for others now. I feel like that's kind of one of my purposes to be here because I realized how that changed my whole life. So I want to be that voice for someone else to hopefully change their life. And I think when you maybe find those feelings come up, don't ignore them, you know, because the signs, the signals are always there. You just got to listen, stop, observe, find some stillness, change your perspective. I totally resonate with that, man. I think that, you know, my journey from when I was a model for 10, 11, 12 years, and then I switched to doing coaching. Coaching's always been something I've always loved teaching people things. And I like being that person that can, you know, I can get deep and deep and meaningful into somebody's, you know, life about whatever it might be. I'm always better one on one than in big groups and that sort of thing. And I found that as soon as I was able to actually facilitate change within people's lives without actually doing anything for them, other than just challenging some things that they maybe believe that weren't actually real, they were things that were in their own head and getting them to become stronger within their own ability of thinking yes i can do this i have the belief i'm able to actually do what i'm actually what i've set out to do um and it's almost just like supporting as you said it's like guiding it's 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 
facilitating that change within someone that allows them to go, no, I can do this. I, I, you know, I've been thinking for years that I can't, but I can because I've got, you know, almost the accountability from someone like yourself or, or, or me to help them. But also, you know, the, the, it's someone telling them that they can when the whole life they've had themselves telling them they can't. So no, I think it's, I think it's, it's a, it's a great, um, powerful tool to have, you know, to be able to understand somebody and help them in a way that allows them to help themselves. Because I think a lot of people look for help from others and others will help them, but they'll do it for them. And then that's, that's not going to help the process. It's going to essentially just as soon as they leave or as soon as they, they're not in the picture anymore, it's going to go back to square one. The best thing you can do to help someone through something is to show them how they can do it for themselves or help them find it for themselves because then they'll be self-sufficient. And then they may even go on to support somebody else in that exact same thing. And then the circle continues to, 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 to turn around and around and around. It's a, it's a powerful, powerful thing being able to, coach someone in a way that allows them to be able to just do it themselves and i think that yeah you, you know you, you clearly do that through through your work and yeah i hope i do it through mine too <laughs> it's one of those one of those things it's good fun um rich i wanted to um i wanted to just um finish off uh by talking to you a little bit about what you think your plans for the rest of this year obviously being you know a bit up in the air what's going on and stuff we talked about at the beginning your learnings that you've had so far do you think what do you think you're going to take forward through to the rest of this year and, and onwards for the rest of your life that that's going to be um you know the, the most I suppose a poignant thing that you can take away from this whole experience going forward do you think you're going to keep slowing down do you think it's going to be work related it's going to be you related what do you think is the thing you're going to take forward i'm definitely not slowing down no no, no, no. <laughs> I, I wouldn't i'm not i've probably had the busiest couple of months of my life I, I i so that might be misunderstood before i've had time to reflect because i've been in one place i've been able to sort of have, find more time and be more um respective of downtime but i've still been very busy i'm creating i'm building i'm researching i'm studying i'm learning i'm out in nature i'm training more than ever because I realize it's actually very achievable if you start to make the priorities the right way around. So for me moving forward, it's how do I, how do I build from now? I definitely don't intend to slow down. I'm already creating three more businesses off the back of what I think people will need more of because I feel that like we need to be prepared a little bit better for anything else like this to happen. Anyone who's not looking at this as an opportunity to grow to delve deeper into learning how to improve their health. Everyone should be doubling down on being a badass organic chef, home cooking machine. Anyone yeah. who's not looking to find more mindful practices and, and add them into every single day to be bulletproof mentally and physically is missing a trick. We've got to like mentally bulletproof ourselves and we should be doubling down on anything that improves our health right now because that's what's caught people out. Yeah. You know, if anyone who thought they'd be able to get by, they'll wing it a little bit. They can get away with not sleeping well. They can get away with like burning the candle. They can get away with eating crappy food. They can get away with drinking lots of alcohol and they can survive on one job or something. They're not, they're doing something that they don't love and they're just going to keep going with it. Crazy. So this should hopefully be the big fire rocket up your bum to go and make it happen and go and chase it. And for me, I've never felt so driven to go and improve my own health, my own lifestyle, but also try and inspire people on the way. So for me, I'm, I'm improving my health. I'm probably fitter and healthier than I've ever been. I, I've, I've decided, I've started writing a book. I've, do you know what I mean? I, I could go on and on and on. I think if you're going to make someone like wake up, it's yeah. like remind them to stop. Yeah. Take time out regularly. Check in on what you're doing and how, you tr um, how you're spending your days and listen to your body a little bit more. Be yeah. intuitive. Go with your gut. Go with your, like, your deep intuition because it's not often wrong. Yeah. If something's not serving you, if something's not feeling good, if you're not like you know, in tune with what you're doing, change it. And if, you, if that's too much of a big move, maybe make a little change until you get momentum because you're going to love that journey a lot more than the one you're just pottering along with. Yeah. So yeah, I'm fired up. I can't wait to get back out there. 
I love that. I think that I, I resonate with everything you just said. My, my motto is do what makes you happy. You know, if there's nothing that make, doesn't make you happy, then don't, don't bother doing it. Just do the things that put a smile on your face and you will be happy awesome. every day. And it be just a nice makes person. Be yeah. friendly, be caring, be thoughtful. Do nice things for everybody. Try and bring value to everybody's life that you come into contact with. Just that in itself will be a lovely way to go through life. Yeah. I guarantee you will come back tenfold. Absolutely. You know? It's that compound not, effect. It's hard talking. to find joy in every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the compound effect thing we talked about earlier. You know, if you do something today and you do it then again tomorrow and again the next day, it's going to just multiply every single day to become something that is huge later on down the line. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't cost anything. It's like when you were a kid, you were taught manners cost nothing. Gratitude, being kind, being you know honest, all that stuff that you just said, it doesn't cost anything. It just takes a little bit of self-effort and self-awareness to be able to just go, I'm going to do it and I'm going to just do it for the sake of helping other people. And it's, it's as you said, it comes back tenfold in many funny little different little ways but it always does <laughs> it always does and the funny thing is like you never you never notice it until it's happened and you're like oh yeah that's okay that might that makes sense that's why you know what i mean it's it's connecting people and networking in a, in a in a way that's just you know making everyone feel good i think that's what it comes down to it really really does um yeah. do you mind that i usually do this with, a, with my guests i sort of ask them a couple of quick fire questions it's just sort of to get to know you a bit better it's mostly uh just uh you know things that things that maybe you've been up to during lockdown would you would you mind if i gave you did some quick questions with you let's do it perfect right so um during lockdown or, or over the last couple of months what's been your favorite takeaway if you have been pizza yes like it what's the favorite <laughs> app you're using at the moment homemade 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 pizza like it yeah um favorite app you're using at the moment um the car map the car map yes good app i like that one what is the place you're missing visiting the most here in the uk my grandma shame okay is she far from you she's up in yorkshire i'm in south wales and she's on her own and she yeah. loves her loves her grandson richie so um yeah i miss her yeah, hopefully miss, miss our thing. regular visits. She's my yeah. biggest inspiration. She's 90 something and she's just outliving everybody. And <laughs> she's a yogi. She Amazing. walks in nature. She eats her greens. She's resilient. She's mentally switched on. And it, her biggest tool, she reckons, is because she refuses to not make every day count. So, um, yeah, I miss That's her. That's awesome. Mate, I, I hope you get to see her soon. I really do. I will. I will. Um, what is the uh, what is the hardest challenge that you've been uh, nominated to do during lockdown, fitness challenge wise? Oh, I was asked to do the backpack pack your backpack challenge by Snowdonia uh, Adventure um, Company, and I had to teach a half was it forty five minute class with ten kilos on a rucksack, and it was horrible. But good at the same time. But yeah, it was the only one I went through with. Good, good yeah. to push yourself. Absolutely, sounds good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is um, what is the what's the best series you've been watching recently? Do you know what? I don't watch a lot of TV, but I was, I was actually persuaded by a lot of people to watch the um, the, my, the the Jordan one, the um, Last Dance. The Last Dance. So I'm pretty into that because I can. Not that I was an NBA basketball player or anything close to it, <laughs> but I know that mentality. And when I was playing rugby, when I was, you know, a young lad, giving opportunities and, and really seizing the moment and being in that mindset and just just all those aspects, I find it fascinating. So, yeah, I highly yeah. recommend that. It's a good one. Yeah, I've been watching. I'm, I think I'm on two episodes to go. It's a, it's a, as you said, it's a really good one for just like full focus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, get the job done. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe yourself in three words? Passionate, driven, and loving. Like it, like it. Um, what's the best book you've read recently, and what has it taught you? Um, so I don't sit still long enough to read books, so I struggle. Like I listen to audio books more than anything else because I listen to when I'm driving and when I'm running. I get through them quicker. Yeah, but because I have been at home a little bit. The last book was uh, Shoe Dog. Oh, great book. The, the great Nike book. guy, yeah. And that relates a bit back to The Last Dance, which you're watching now at the moment as well. I think exactly, episode, yeah. The episode, it kind of flips in and 
does the whole yeah. does the whole uh, thing. Yeah, it's a great book that one. What's this? Phil Knight, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've got many, but that was interesting because of the business a a aspect as well. I find that's quite interesting to where I'm at with this new business idea. So exciting. Yeah, resonated a lot. Good stuff. Like it. Um, what would you say to your 21 year old self? Oof. Makes me a bit emotional just thinking about the 21 year old self. I was, I was in New Zealand playing rugby, working on a deer farm, raising calves. And um, it was a very different life. And I was very lost because I just left the UK. And I think if I was speaking to that 21 year old self, I'd say, keep learning. And get back to being your true self and stop pretending to be someone you're not. Like it. That's good advice. That's good advice. And what is the best thing that you've ever been given in terms of advice from somebody else? Well, I've had many people, many mentors. But I, I would honestly say that the, the one thing that resonates right now is my, actually with my yoga teacher who would always say don't be afraid of emotions they're there to show you something they're there to steer you don't feel fear embrace the fear let it channel energy in the right direction but it's never normally wrong so yeah. dial back into that connect yeah. with that side of you so yeah i mean that allows me just to lean into anything that comes up even if it is fear so I think that's where we find our biggest power. But that's where I feel I'm steered now. There's, there's, there's a higher thing going on up there right now that's taking me on a very different path to where I thought it all began. And I think a lot of us don't take those signals and read them right. We, we choose to turn the other way or we suppress them or we put them off. And I think we end up regretting not going after that thing that we know deep down is the way we should be going. That's some solid advice. Absolutely. I think, yeah, listening to you, as you said before, listening to your gut can tell you more about anything than, than, than here or your heart. Um, last question. What is your greatest strength? My resilience to yeah. not panic. My nice. resilience to push past uh, a challenging obstacle. But yeah, I don't, I don't, nothing really scares me so i i guess that's i'm I'm able to embrace fear i'm able to embrace emotions i'm able to i i honestly or maybe the different side of this is it's allowed me to make peace with my own demons yeah. and my other obstacles and the challenges that i've faced i found that's given me a better insight into the struggles other people have to be able to be a better coach so i can have that empathy and also um appreciation compassion all of these things i think i've made peace the fact that they're all strengths and that i feel we all have the ability to tap into those fears and use them as fire and fuel yeah you're absolutely right i think it's, it's the yeah, resilience and being able to build on on what you can learn from your experiences is super, super important yeah lean in let it become your superpower yeah it's good um Last question I have for you um, is, what day of the week is it? I don't know. <laughs> I think you're the first person that doesn't know. It's, <laughs> most people are like, uh, what, is it Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday? I think it's Monday. It's, it's Monday, Monday, but apparently it's a, it's a bank holiday as well. Apparently. Yeah, exactly. Know. It's just, just it's still, it's still just as busy as it normally is, so it doesn't really make a difference. But anyway, Richie, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Um, if anyone wants to find out more about you and your, and your, your businesses and, and, and things that you're, you're doing at the moment, where can they find you? What's the best place? Um, well, I, I think I'm probably much, still most active on Instagram, which is, again, this one, Richie Norton underscore. But head to the stremtemple.co.uk, the website, and that gives you pretty much a full spectrum of where I'm at, what I'm doing, where I've been, the kind of things I talk about. Um, so yeah, that's probably a good starting point. Perfect, thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to enjoy the rest of your sunshine in, uh, in South Wales. Um, look, I hopefully will get to see you at some point in the future when we go back to normal, uh, but I appreciate your time and thank you so much for sharing everything with us this afternoon. All right?
No worries. Nice Take one. care, man. Peace See out. You See you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. That was a really awesome chat. I uh, super, super enjoyed that one. Um, so, yeah, as you heard, Richie is on Instagram mostly. So if you have any questions for him about today's live, you can drop him a DM or uh, head to the Strengths Temple and you can see all of his links on there. Um, I've got a few more of these lives coming up this week, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. So if you guys are around and want to tune in for those, we've got some lovely people on um, those. Uh, yeah, that's, I think we've got, well, we've got 12 o'clock tomorrow, uh, we've got 5 o'clock Wednesday and then we've got uh, 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock all Thursday I have to check that but yes it's on my page check it out and um, thanks so much for joining us and I'll see you guys tomorrow peace